Well, praise the Lord and welcome to Defining Moments this morning. You know, we just praise the Lord for this beautiful springtime that he has given us and won't be long before we will celebrate his resurrection. And I know people are getting in that uh, mood for Easter and a lot of people have given up stuff for this season of Lent. And I uh, know that it's setting si aside a time of dedication and, you know, I, I just think that we need to uh, to be more mindful of him every day and not just during this time or this season when we are preparing ourselves for Easter, but to keep in mind, you know, he's the risen Savior. 365 days a year, he is always on that throne, ever interceding for you and I, and we need to live that and understand that every day. And I'm so thankful that he is in the business of healing, the business of saving, the business of delivering and setting the captive free. The word says that he took captivity captive and he gave gifts to men and he has given each one of you a gift and it may be a gift of ministering to your children. It may be a gift of ministering to the world, but you have a gift that God has put in you that he wants to bring out and bring forth that it can shine and be used for his glory and we're just so thankful that you have taken time today to tune us in and if you found us by accident just stay where you are because you're going to hear something today that's going to impact your life i know it's going to impact our life by hearing it and by partaking of it and you know but we're here to reach you we're here because the lord has said People need to know that my people are real. And we're going to expose ourselves to you in ways over this program. And maybe not just today, but on programs that we have, people are going to expose their dirt to you, I guess is the only way to put it. But you know what? They're not dirty anymore because Jesus Christ has cleaned them up and set them free. I know I hear a lot of things that women say, and a lot of people hear it, and they may, you know, open their mouths, may drop open, and they go, I cannot believe that. But you know what? That's what makes God so incredible. It's because he can take our mess, like I like to say, and he can turn it into a message. I was a mess. You were a mess. You may be a mess. But he can turn that mess into a message. Praise God. I'd like to hear from you. And you can contact me at lynnteamministries at aol.com. Send me an email and I will respond to that. And we will talk or pray with you. Whatever your uh, need might be, we know that we serve a prayer answering God. And you can also find us on Facebook with Defining Moments radio station. Also on YouTube by searching for Defining Moments with Evangelist Lynn Taylor and find a program there and be blessed. And you know, as the uh, standing goes, I usually have a guest and today is no different. And today, uh, it's my honor to introduce to you a young lady that I've known for, for a very long time. I've known her since she was a teenager. Wow, makes me feel old. But you know what? I've watched God bring her forth, and she has just blossomed and became a beautiful wife and mother, and God is just doing great things in her life. Now, she may not have started out that way, but it's not how you start, my friend. It's how you finish. And I'm telling you what, this girl is finishing strong because she has had God reveal to her his love and she has a testimony some people have a test and wind up with the monies but she's been through the test and has a testimony and today it's my honor to introduce her to you and I want to say welcome Carmen Stinson to Defining Moments today thank you for coming thank you sister Lynn but that's the reason that we share our testimony is so somebody can know how God has set us free but I have many things that I could speak on today, but God has directed me to speak on one thing, and that's addiction. Because it's such a widespread panic, and it's killing so many people, so many good people. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. In 2008, after our last child was born, I became addicted. It was not something I expected to ever happen to me, but I was addicted, mentally and physically. I was taking pills to get up. And then I was taking pills to go to sleep. And before I knew it, I was physically, mentally bound. 
So it come to the point where something had to give. I had to go to rehab. And that was the worst thing that I'd ever been through was to leave my family and my home for two weeks because I've always been there as a mother. But so I come out of rehab and everything was okay for quite some time. Well, I became where I thought mentally that I needed it again. So I come to the point where I was dabbling around in it. And so but it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever been through. Well, it come to the point where I was either sink or swim. And I was talking to Tracy about it. And Tracy, my husband, he was not aware that it had even gotten to that point again. Well, he didn't let on about it. He was just there, you know, for comfort and support because I didn't want to leave my kids again. I was determined. So I needed a breakthrough. Well, it was on a Wednesday. I will never forget it. We were getting ready to go to church. And yes, you can be in church and you can be bound. Yes, you can. Amen. Well, we went to church and then we come home and I was still determined. I'd just come to the point where I had to be broke free. Well, as we got home, I started marching up and down my driveway, praying for God to deliver me. Because all my life, <clears throat> I'd been heard of, I'd heard of people being instantly set free, instantly de delivered. I mean, I'd seen God's hand work. I'd seen God's hand move. I'd seen people be healed. Well, I just marched up and down my driveway, and I was praying, God, I need you. I need to see your hand move, and I need to see it move now. Well, I sort of basically put God to the test. God, help me. It's either sink or swim. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it got to the point where, I, I mean, I couldn't use anymore. I couldn't take anything. I was out. So I knew I had it in my mind when I woke up the next morning that it was going to start. The withdrawals, everything that goes along with being an addict. Because I was so needing a breakthrough from God. And I knew he could do it. I woke up that morning set free. And I have not looked back. Not one time. And I've been set free ever since. And basically, I mean, I want everybody to know you can be set free from bondage. And you can walk in freedom. Like God wants you to be. He wants you to be free. Because it's not his will for us to live in bondage and for us to be captive. And so I'm just, I want people to know you can be broke free. You can be set free. It's just your determination how much you want of God. Because God is there. And I've always held on to the scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. And that has been my scripture that I've held on to. And I've even quoted it back to God. And I would even say, God, your word says you would never leave me or forsake me. And he never has. Amen. He has been there. And I have been set free. And it's been over a year. And I'm set free. Amen. I have not had one withdrawal. Not one look back. Nothing. Nothing. Praise the Lord. You know, that is, nobody can do that but the Lord. Yes. And it's just, <coughs> you know, there are women today, maybe even men listening to this program, Carmen, and they're going, no way. It cannot be that easy. It is. The reason it is so easy is because, like you said, it's either sink or swim. It's either I'm going to have faith that God is going to deliver and bring me out of this or I'm going to die. It was to that point. It was either going to take a it was going to take God. Nobody but God. No 12 step program which I'm not knocking those or anything. Right. 
but sometimes it takes God. And that and you, if you know that it's God that's all it's going to take, that's the first step. That's right. Is knowing that God is the deliverer. Like they say, when God's all you got, God's all you need. That's right. And he is. And, you know, that's what these programs are about is saying, hey, you know, we're not going to promise you that you're going to go to bed one night and wake up the next morning free. It doesn't happen Mm-mm. that way for everybody. Mm-mm. I know I went through a, a terrible time back in 2004. I thought I was lose, going to lose my mind. The enemy did everything he could to get me to commit suicide. I mean, my mind was bombarded with with things and, and, and just a spiritual warfare and a battle. And I was like you. It was either God had to help me or I was going to die. It was no if ands, or buts about it. I went to the doctor one day because I had a, a problem with my sinuses or something was going on. And just there in his office, I completely broke. And I began to cry uncontrollably. It was like I had no control over my emotions. Mm-hmm. And the doctor looked at me and he said, what's going on with you? I said, I don't know. And he said, well, we need to give you some, uh, we need to get you on this prescription for uh, depression. And I said, give me something. I don't care what it is. Just, you know, if it'll help me, then give it to me. And I, I got that medicine. I took the prescription. I got it filled. But all the time I was saying, God, this isn't the way you want this to go. This isn't what you want for me. And, you know, the Lord just, I, I took a few of those pills, and I, you know, I couldn't tell they helped me at all. And I said, okay, God, this is a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. This is not a physical thing here. These are demons from hell trying to kill me and stop my ministry and stop my very life. And I said, okay, Lord, I, I tell you what, and this is honestly, I was like you with God. I didn't walk up and down the driveway, but I took my Bible, and I put it in the floor by my bed, and I took my shoes off, and I stood on that word. And I said this to God. I said, okay, God, I am standing flat-footed on the word of God. This is what it says, and that is what it says, and I dare to believe this. And the only pill I'm going to take is the gospel. Amen. And I began mm-hmm. to read scriptures the Lord gave me, and I went through and, you know, I hadn't intended to share any of my testimony, but this kind of just stirred it up right. to let people know, hey, you can be free. Yes. But I went through an anxiety attack that lasted four months. I didn't get a break. I thought my heart was going to explode. It would beat up to like 140 beats a minute. And I even was uh, keeping uh, children for a veterinarian at the time. And she would come in, and I would say, how about filling my heart? Count my heartbeats. And she said, you need to see a cardiologist. I said, I need to see Jesus. And so I did like you. I just got down and dirty with God. I told him, I said, I'm going to make an appointment with you. If I made an appointment with a doctor, I would have to go at that appointed time. So, God, I'm telling you right now, people may say, you mean you was that bold with God? I was desperate. Let me yes. tell you something. If God hadn't intervened with me, I wouldn't be yes. here. And there's family that might hear this. I had no idea what I was going through. That's how good it, I was at hiding what I was going through because I thought the devil said, people know you're going through this. They're going to know why. So, sorry, liar. I'm fixing to get free is what I'm fixing to do. And so I told the Lord, I said, I will meet you at such and such a place at this time, and I'm going to have a talk with you. And I'm going to tell you what I did. I went where I told God I'd meet him. I was there waiting on him at that time. And I just got before him with nothing but me and God. And I fell out on that floor, and it was to the point where I would have to pick, literally pick my legs up and make them move just so I could walk. I was so overwhelmed with that depression and anxiety and panic but I went to bed one night and I had a dream and that dream began to minister to me I won't go in detail about the dream but it began to minister to me and I began to put one foot in front of the other spiritually I began to do what the Lord told me to do the word I'm not telling anybody don't go to the doctor or don't take medicine but right. I'm telling you this is what worked for me I took that that bottle of pills and I poured them down the drain I said God I ain't taking another one you'll either heal me and you'll either do what I have preached you to do or I will die now the choice is yours not mine and I promise you I began to come out of that thing and one morning I woke up and it was over 
it was over. Now, do I say the devil don't ever come back knocking and go, hey, hey, remember? Oh, yeah, your brother died mental illness. Your mother had mental problems and died because of this, that, and the other. But I'm not my brother. Amen. And the enemy would tell me that. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, next time the devil tells you that, that, that you're going to be like your brother, say thank you. I said, Lord, I can't thank him that I'm going to be like my brother. I love my brother. But I didn't want to have mental problems. He said, tell him thank you because I am your elder brother. And you want to be just like me. And I began Glory to use God. those things Amen. against the enemy. Glory God. Well, see, I've always said, well, what if the pills come back up in my face? What if it comes with temptation? But God said he would always make a way of yes, escape. He will. And I've held on to that. I've held on to what God said during this time. He said he would make a way of escape, and he has. Absolutely. But I also believe that God will put you to a point where you desperately need him to show you how he works. And that is what he's doing. Was this not a defining moment in your life? Oh, yes. Was this not a turning point? Yes. Didn't this bring you into a place? Of Where I never knew God was. Exactly, exactly. And Carmen and I were talking before we went on the air. And some of you ladies or, or gentlemen may be in a, in a pit. And that's exactly what I felt like. I felt like I was in this deep, dark pit. And the walls were muddy and slimy. And I couldn't get out. And I'd crawl up a little, and I'd slide back down. I'd crawl up a little, and I'd feel a little encouragement, and my heart would kind of, my, rate, my heart rate would start going down. And I'd say, whew, praise God, it's over. And then, boom, it would hit me again. And I felt like I couldn't get out. But it's because we can't get out by ourselves. No. It takes God reaching way down. And I love the scripture that says his arm is not short, that he cannot deliver. The hand of the Lord is not short. And in ancient times, if a, if a man had a crippled arm and his arm was short or turned back, you know how arms can, sometimes mm -hmm. people's arms can be, that meant that he couldn't reach out and pay for his purchases. And he wore, he bore reproach because he was scarred. He had a, a crippled arm and he couldn't reach it out to pay. But the Lord wanted his children to know, hey, I can pay for it. And I did pay for it. 2,000 years ago at an old rugged cross. I paid for these things. I paid for your addiction. I paid for your sickness. I paid for your sin. There are Christian women, moms listening right now, and you're popping pills because you can't take the things that happen in your home and you're a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. and so yes. you're crying out for deliverance. Carmen, speak a word to those women. Give them some encouragement. Well, that's how it became for me. I was, it kind of more or less came to where it made me super mom, you know, and then it become just spiraled out of control mm -hmm. and to the point where I, I couldn't do anything about it but cry out to God. But see, I'd been in church my whole life and I'd seen the things of God and I'd went through the motions and, but I had never encountered where I got so desperate for God. Where I really, truly knew him, mm -hmm. spiritually and mentally, like I do now. Mm -hmm. And I, I can say, for the first time in my life, I know him spiritually, mentally, physically. Amen. And there is nothing that God can't do. Not at all. He has moved in our life so strong in the past three years. Mm-hmm. That it's just, it's unbelievable of what God can do. Isn't, um, Tracy, your husband, isn't he preaching some now? Yes. Speaking yes. some? Yes. Praise God. Because he's got a call on his life, too. Right. But it was finally when I got broke free mm -hmm. that God really started moving. Because, you know, God can't move under bondage. No. And that's one of the things the Lord spoke to me. And I know some people listening don't understand when I say I was praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But I was praying in the Spirit. And I was driving home and... I didn't understand when I was praying because I was praying in the Holy Ghost. And um, a word began to come out of my mouth that I recognized, but it scared me too because I knew what it meant. And the word was Ichabod. And I said, oh, Lord, why am I hearing this word? And the Lord brought something to my mind. He said, when you let go of this, then this will let go of you. Yes. Yes. And I had to surrender some things. Mm -hmm. I had to be willing to give up some soul ties. I had to be willing to walk away from some things that I thought would be a part of my future for the rest of my life. I right. had to let go. And it hurt. 
I mean, it's like getting a tooth pulled without any kind of Novocaine. It hurt. But, you know, there's a song that says he'll take you through the fire again. It says he never promised that the cross would not get heavy. Some of these people are carrying crosses today. They're Christians, and they're carrying the cross of Christ, but there's so much stuff that they don't know how to deal with it. And so instead of turning to Jesus, people are turning to the to something substantial, something tangible they can feel. Right, but God, he had spoke to me, and I knew they're so strong. If I just depended on him and not all the pills and stuff, what he would do in my life, and he has done it. Mm-hmm. He has done it. Everything that I have felt, everything that I knew that God would and could do he's done it and he's doing it Mm -hmm. and you know my i think one thing i'd like to say too is um don't fight the process don't fight what god's trying to do for you if god's trying to pull you away from something or somebody now ladies i'm not talking about your husband okay you got to pray that thing through (laughs) pray that man through but there if there's some situations or some friends or some influences in your life or some, maybe you've just overloaded yourself with things you're doing with your kids. you got your kids so active and you're overloaded and overwhelmed. And you may see that things are kind of crumbling in these areas. Don't fight the process because that just may not be what God wants you to carry into your future. Right. Now, anything can be a bondage, mm-hmm. not just pills. Anything can stand in the way of God moving. Mm-hmm. Anything can become an idol. Right. And anything that becomes an idol becomes an addiction. Yeah. I know the lady yeah. that worshipped a, a false god. She had an idol set up to him. And she was sick, mad sick. And she prayed to this idol for him to heal her, for this god to heal her. And he didn't. But then she encountered some Christians, went to church, got saved, gave her life to Jesus, and he healed her. She went back. She tore down her idol, and somebody went in the, the, the place she had him and said, well, where is so-and-so? And she says, oh, I don't serve him no more. I serve Jesus. You know why? Because there's yes. power. Right. Um, power in Jesus to set people free. Carmen, I want you to say a prayer for these ladies before we go off the air. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask, Lord Jesus, if there's anybody out there, God, that needs to be set free from bondage, Lord, that you move on them, God, that you place in their heart, God, that you're there, and that you can set them free, God, and that it's your will for us to walk in freedom and peace. Yes, it is. God, it's your will, Jesus. Lord, and I pray, God, Jesus, just let us be a light to somebody, God, that needs you. Lord, if it's just one person, God, that has heard this, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done here today, God. In your name, amen. Amen. Now, we're living proof that Jesus is alive and well. Amen, yes. Sister Sonia's with us. Sonia, you got something you want to share? No, I just want to say that um, there was an awesome testimony by Carmen, and, and God is moving in such a miraculous way defining moments with um, all the ladies that come forth with their testimonies and with what God can and will do in their lives and this is just another example of a defining moment in a woman's life that's been set free from all the bondages and of course we've said bondages not just drugs not just our idols are many things right. and those idols are coming down the more and more the women come together the more and more we allow God to work in our lives when we allow him to do what he's trying to do for us it is always a better river on the other side than the one Amen. Where he yes. is. Amen. glory to God glory to God and I just want to tell Carmen that was awesome yes, awesome testimony Thank you. Mm-hmm. awesome testimony and awesome word an awesome mm-hmm. word, and I know that someone has listened and by your voice been set free today, been set free this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, what we think is so small, we think it's, it, it doesn't move people and it has no effect, but I promise you God has moved through you this morning, mm-hmm. and someone has been set free by that word. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 i tell you what, he is definitely the one we need to call on. And, you know, there's one thing about the Lord I love. And that is, he doesn't go to sleep. You can't look at your clock and say, oh, it's midnight. I can't talk to God. I'll bother him. He wants us to bother him. 
reminds me of the woman in the Bible that, you know, they came to take away her land and she came to the unjust judge and she says, avenge me of my adversary. He said, get out of here, woman. I ain't got time for you. I'm paraphrasing. But he said, go on. I don't have time for you. She went away and she got to thinking about that thing. She says, uh-uh, I'm not giving up that easy. So we give up too easy. Mm-hmm. We say, oh, well, I tried it. I went to church and it just didn't work. And, you know, I got prayed for and I got up the next morning and I'm still the same. It just didn't work. I just don't think, no, she didn't have that mindset. Her mindset was, I'm not going to stop till I get free. I'm not going right. to stop till I get what I want. And the Bible says that she went back until she worried him half to death. And he finally says, okay, hey, y'all come in here and do whatever it takes to get this woman back what she wants because she is almost driving me crazy. And what happened? We know the end of the story. It ended well for her. She was avenged of her adversary. She was relieved of her burden. The king got some peace. He got to sleep, and she got what she wanted. And that's the way that our Heavenly Father wants us to do. Ladies, don't give up. Don't give up. Believe these words. I told you that we get real transparent on this program. We get where the rubber meets the road. Why? Because it's not about what we walked through. We didn't walk through it for just ourselves. We walked through it for you. And you know what? What I shared a little bit about what I went through, I say this very reverently and in all humility. I pray that the Lord will never allow me to walk that path again. But you know what? If it will bring one soul to Jesus, Amen. I would do it all over yes. again. Yes. I would do it all over again because I know that he is my deliverer. And I know that he is my friend, and I know that he is my father. And I know he is the same thing for each one of you that are listening out there today. He is your peace. You say, I have no peace. I can't find any peace. Let me spell peace to you. You spell peace, J-E-S-U-S. That spells peace. And he loves you, and he is reaching out to you today. And if everything you've heard us here say here today, remember this, that when you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you, you will experience your greatest defining moment.